Hello, everyone. Uh, we've got another uh, author interview. This is after the festival, but that's okay. We're still having fun. Um, so I've got uh, Bryant here with me today. Will you go ahead and start and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Bryant Mihay. I'm currently 28 years old. I uh, live in Denver, Colorado. Um, I work for the Center on Colfax as the coordinator of elder and uh, disability services. And my show was featured for uh, the first time ever in the Colorado New Musical Festival this uh, two weeks ago. No, one week and a half almost or so two, ago. Yeah, almost two weeks, yeah. <laughs> Getting on two weeks ago, yeah. It's yep. crazy how time flies. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. Um, anything else? The you pronouns he they. Sorry. No, you're good. Oh yes, he they. Beautiful. Um, I should have asked people that as part of their introduction to the whole thing. Uh, we're all learning. Ugh, something I work on. Um, tell us about your show. What is your show about? Um, so that's kind of a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have kind of. My show is a jukebox musical that is based in the music of Mika. Um, it had its origination in the pandemic uh, with uh, when my good pandemic friends and I uh, spending most of our time together in my, the, my apartment uh, talking about art and listening to music and talking about drag and everything. And we were listening to Mika music and we kind of, you know, looked at each other at a certain point and we're just like, you know, we we hear something here, we hear like a story, we hear something, but we couldn't quite define it at that moment. And so I uh, I took that, that sort of moment and ran with it and developed this show that is uh, called Staring at the Sun. Um, it is a musical that I like to compare it to Cats in that it, in the musical Cats, you as the audience are really thrust into this world where, you, don't, you have no idea what a jellical cat is. You're expected to catch up and to sort of find out and sort of as the, the action of the show occurs, you sort of learn and sort of this more as people discuss it sort of way. Um, and so I kind of took that approach in that in this world I have created, it is kind of earth, kind of not, it's, you know, post-apocalyptic, it's pre-apocalyptic, it's it's a world that is very scarce on safety and resources. And so uh, there are these characters, these people that are sirens in that they have the ability to transform the world around them into uh, essentially a musical number. Um, I have described this as a it's both a voluntary and involuntary uh, ability that these people share. Um, it is more than just the singing and dancing and all the revelry that goes into that. It is how these characters uh, process emotion. It's how they deal with the world around them. It's, um, it's based in community and, and, you know, the development of community as you know, people in this world really flock to these you know, flock to these sirens uh, as a way of building and maintaining safety and community. And so, these cultures develop and grow up around these characters um, in their personal style. And so, they're very reflective of uh, who the siren is as a person. And so. My show follows a younger siren uh, uh, that I did base the name off of Mika. It's McKay, you know, big stretch there. <laughs> um, they are going through this process in order to join a higher council of sirens in order to have this presence and influence in their uh, the wider community. And so they go about um, entering into this competition and there is a lot that happens along the way. There's a lot of heartbreak. There's a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, large moments that occur that really drive this story without giving away too much. You have to read it to find out more. But uh, 
essentially what I have found it as. It's a celebration of queer identity. It's a celebration of queer art and joy in that what I really wanted to drive the story forward was yes, conflict, because that's very inherent to any sort of story is some sort of conflict to address and overcome. But really the main driving force is love and the love that these people share for each other um, and all the different forms, romantic, community, you know, uh, just kind of personal love, it's familial love. Um, and I really wanted that to be what drives the story and what what brings, uh, you know, these characters to uh, their eventual choices and outcome. Nice. Yeah, nice. no, it's, 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 yeah, there's a lot there and drawing you into this like whole world. And anyway, just listening to you, I was getting like hypnotized and thinking about all this. <laughs> yeah, it's that time of day. Um, why did you write your show slash why is it? And because our, our whole thing with with the festivals, why isn't an untold story or like telling stories that aren't typically told? Um, I think you touched on it a little bit, but if you want to elaborate on that idea. The why of this story, part of it was um, intentionally creating and putting non-binary characters into uh, this world and really infusing it so that it's it's never something that's questioned. It's like an automatic, like, yes, this is who you are. I may have, you know, my personal problems with you as a, uh, as a human being or as a person, but I have, there's an inherent respect into the identity of these characters that's never really brought into question. And so I wanted to to really live in this world where you know people's identity was never the source of the issue yeah. um and so that was it's kind of this you know it is a fantasy world but it also lives in this fantasy where you know that is just something that is accepted and um uh and it's just uh just part of these cultures um and i want to you know really shout out that i wrote this show primarily uh, underneath the direction of my master's uh, professors, uh, Sally Bailey and uh, David McKay, um, who were two uh, theater professors at Kansas State University. Um, I wrote this uh, uh, within my final uh, semester of my master's because, you know, we'd been a couple, about a year or so into the pandemic and I really wanted to reconnect with art and I really wanted to have an artistic experience in my final semester. And so I, I uh, uh, it asked them if I could do this special course where I would write, you know, I would have deadlines. I would have to actually actually write it and not just have it in my head as this idea that I love to play around with, but actually, you know, produce something. And so, um, I, I also wrote it because I wanted to reconnect with my art. I, when I perform in drag, I often use Mika's music. And so it was also my way of reconnecting with my drag character um, and with what I had, you know, what I'd lost in the, the time of the, the pandemic. Yeah, no, I love that. I love knowing that your, your drag character loves Mika <laughs> too. That's so fun. Um, so some of these, questions had to do with like being prior to the the festival itself but um having like attended the showcase um what do you think or i guess speak to kind of the, the original question was like why should folks see a showcase performance and like specifically with your selected portion of the show um but i guess the question now past tense would or you know with it being past would be like what what did you get out of attending the showcase and and seeing your portion of the show or like i don't know what does that bring up for you <laughs> if that makes sense yeah yeah um i i really enjoyed going i thought it was really interesting to see the wide range of of shows and topics and musical styles um and uh, just getting to to see new works was really exciting as I've done a lot of new work uh, like workshops and, and groups and events throughout my kind of theater uh, history. And so part of that was just new works are always very exciting and very just interesting to be involved with. Um, I personally, when I went in, I was just like excited because this was just the first time I'd ever had anything put on stage and just to 
I think what I really took away from it was not necessarily during the performance, but during like our first initial meeting when we had everyone in on Google Meets, I was looking around at like these people who had been writing for years, who were, you know, composers and who had, you know, lived in New York and who did all these amazing pieces. And I was, I was just really struck with, I'm in the same room with all of these people of, even though my work is new, even though it's, you know, still unpolished, it's still being developed. It's, um, it was enough to, to know that it had received this, this recognition and this uh, place amongst um, people who were, I mean, I'm not a composer. I have never written a, a drop of music in my life. And so when I tell people I have written a musical, they're like, oh my God, like you should, you know, play the music or whatever. And I'm just like, I, it's not me. I cannot play music. I do not have uh, any of those sort of musical making bones in my body. But I, what I really prided myself on was finding a way to use the music that existed as, you know, the the vehicle for storytelling. For my feeling uh, proud about being able to include as much of the music as I did in a way that. Um, N none of it to me, you know, being the writer, not, none of it to me seemed like it was extra or excessive or just like, you know, thrown in just to have another song in it or something. It really, I felt very proud to have, you know, put together this story through music. Um, and so I think getting to see it live, getting to hear even just the, the scene that got read, um, it was just, it was unique to hear my own words in other people's mouths <laughs> and to to know that it's um it's you know just a starting off point with it and that uh, this is something that i'm wanting to pursue further and i hope gets to one day be its own production of of course yeah no and i love the i love what you said about like that you're not you don't write music you're not a composer but you wrote a musical and using music that already existed to tell a story like I think people need to hear that, like, if you have a story to tell or you have a motivation, like, you can find a way to do it. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that writing, there shouldn't be gatekeeping on writing and there shouldn't be gatekeeping on writing a musical and that you can write a new musical even if you're not a musician, whether that means finding a musician or finding, you know, we had another person who had submitted and they were one of our finalists who um, did the music of Tom Lair because all of his stuff is in the public domain. So it's a jukebox musical of all Tom Lear stuff, which is really fun. And so like, yeah. you know, finding those pieces and parts and finding collaborators, like I think is really important. And that like, you don't have to be a musician or a musical theater person to still write a musical and tell a story that way. Um, I just love the way you said that. I love that. Um, next question I have for you is like, what either are this show's next steps or like, what do you want to manifest into the world as your show's next steps? Um, one thing I would love to manifest is that it gains the attention of the artist and his team himself. Um, that, you know, if you're out there listening to this, if you come across this because, you know, we're, it, it is something that has existed in the world now that, you know, it interests the artist and that it's something that I can pursue further. And, you know, I'll, I'll just plug in that I know that the artist Mika is quite a theater nerd. Nice. <laughs> um, if you ever heard, uh, he has a song called Popular that he wrote based off of the Wicked musical song, Popular, um, that he actually took to Stephen Schwartz and, um, you know, got his approval to uh, uh, put on to create that show. And so um, I think that is the ultimate goal is to to see it recognized by the artist and to um, just to see where they would be interested in taking it because, the, you know, that's that's a kind of the long term goal of it. Um, but I think in the next, you know, I think one thing I'll do is kind of return to it and start working, uh, reworking dialogue, you know, starting to um, develop it a little further. I've had some ideas of how to change, develop and sort of expand on currently existing ideas and themes. Um, and then, you know, uh, to continue uh, advocating for it. And I know part of it is I'm hoping to attend the writers workshops uh, here in the next either this month or next 
I potentially might be able to this month, um, but I'm, I'm hoping to, you know, go there and to bring it to the writer's workshop, but to also bring the other stuff that I'm working on as well. Yeah. Yay. I would love that. That's one of the things that we really would love to see with, with that writer's workshop is that like, it's an opportunity to like bring your stuff that you're working on and just have like a time to sit down and work on it because I know that's something that like I needed just like an accountability buddy to be like okay I am editing these 10 pages today because I need to and I don't really want to but I know it needs to be done so I can do the things I want to do later mm -hmm. so no I love that I think that would be wonderful um why do you think that Colorado theater wait what oh why do you think Colorado theaters should produce your piece like why should or maybe you can think of it as like why should mika want to help like produce this why should denver do this um i think for a couple reasons um i think the main one that comes to my mind is when i was talking about having written this from like the perspective of love and wanting it to be a very like love driven show is that that's more than just um, an ideal for me. I, when I say I wrote this in my master's, I was getting my master's in drama therapy and I am a recreational therapist and I really wrote this from a drama therapeutic perspective on the, I, you know, like again, the ideas of creating this universe, creating this world um that is so open and accepting of gender identity um because once you see something on stage once you see it as a reality and see that these this world can exist even if it's just in our imagination for now then people see that and they take that out into the world with them and really drive it forward and so i think that it's messages of love and family and the its ability to Mika and part of that is just Mika's ability to write music that is also very theatrical love driven and very um uh, just some of the most creative music I've ever listened to um I think that really sort of drives it home and that it's this it, it feels very um different from other shows even other jukebox musicals that i've listened to in the way that because there is an acknowledgement of the singing that it's not like its own separate thing that happens you know people are talking 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 and then suddenly we're singing um a friend of mine who read the show uh said that these characters these sirens are the literal embodiment of when talking is no longer enough in theater which is the reason they sing is because talking has become not enough um and so they have they these characters are the literal embodiment of that that there is a point where there is nothing more to be said but there is more to be expressed um and i think that message as well can really carry out to people that even if it's you feel like there's something that you can't verbally communicate that there is a way for you to create that message within you and deliver it to the world heck yeah no i love that that was i love i have to go back and find your quote but that was great of the like <laughs> when it, you know there's not enough to be said but there's more to be expressed or something like that that was a great quote. yeah I love that, <laughs> love that. um <laughs> what other so this is the last question but like so in the lead up to the festival what other pieces were you interested in um you shouldn't see more from slash now that you've seen chunks of all of them which ones are you excited to see more of going forward i will have to look through the lists again to get the names but the ones that interested me the most i well the names are they're not catching right now but the one that was about had the babies involved with it oh that was records yes yeah that one was interesting I really liked its musical style um, and the sort of uh, energy that I felt brought into it, that it was it had this like weird 
absurdist sort of qualities to it, but it also had these like this really grounding moment of, you know, a, a, you know, a mother who just gave birth to her child, having that child ripped away, you know, is, you know, there's, there's the absurdity. And then there's also this very real gut wrenching sort of experience in it. And so I, I was very interested in that one. Um, and then I think the other one that stuck out most was, um, uh, oh, the the first one with the, the suburban family. Um, oh, problem with the Pattersons? Yes, yes, yes. Problem with the Pattersons. That one, uh, I really liked the musical storytelling in it because I enjoy shows where it's not just like, oh, we're singing about this thing and then we move on with our lives. It's like, no, the singing is integrated into the experience. It's It informs the action. It is the action. Um, and so I think those two are the ones that stuck out most in my mind, other than my own. But yeah, I think those two are the ones that that uh, uh, that stuck out to me the most. I would have to go through the full list because everything had a little bit of something that I liked that I was interested in. Um, but those are the ones that really stuck out in my mind. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. Well, thank you for taking time and thank you for sharing your work with us. And I hope to see you soon. <laughs> yeah, of course. And everyone, it's welcome to find me on social media. Yeah. Um, Shout your my, out. Tell them all. The yeah. Things. Go for it. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as August Celestial. That's August like the month, Celestial like the body. <laughs> I, uh, I, I perform a lot around Denver. I actually just did Douglas County's Pride Fest uh, this past weekend, uh, hosted uh, one of their events for them. And so I've been uh, just around Denver and performing, and I'm really excited to get, be more involved with the theater scene here. Um, and so thank you very much for uh, selecting my show and for seeing something in it and for helping bring it to this this place and I'm excited to see where it goes next. Yay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. Of course. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.